no matter where you hunt in Arkansas, white-tailed deer belong to the same species. But that doesn't mean they're all the same. Their individual genetic information is different, and a research study at the University of Arkansas is digging into whitetail DNA to help the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission manage the state's deer herd. From a hunter standpoint, I look out and I just see a brown deer. Well, when you start examining their genetic layers, you start seeing who's kin to who. And you also see these kind of migrations that come out of different regions of our state and, and how deer move across our landscape. The study used samples taken from more than 1,700 deer across all 75 counties. Funded and supported by the Game and Fish Commission, the Arkansas Conservation and Molecular Ecology Laboratory started the study to help game and fish wildlife managers respond to chronic wasting disease in the state's deer. By learning how genes move through the whitetail population in different parts of the state, managers can predict how the disease will move. But the study's findings will also benefit overall deer management in Arkansas. We are really excited about this partnership we've had with the University of Arkansas and the genetic study that we have done with them. They've used some cutting edge techniques and we provided samples from around the state from our deer herd. So within the state of Arkansas, the deer aren't all the same. We've, what we've learned is that there are subpopulations and when we look at the genetics, we can see some differences between those populations. And understanding that really helps us to understand how to manage our deer, that this, you know, this group may have some different needs than a group in another part of the state. And knowing that database of, of the genetic uh, makeup of our whitetails, it allows us to be proactive. It allows us to understand deer movements you know, as deer move, they leave genetic material behind. So if you can understand how they move across the landscape, that helps us better understand maybe how this disease will move across the landscape. Marlis Douglas is Bruker Professor of Life Sciences at the University of Arkansas. She wrote the study along with Michael Douglas, the department's 21st century chair in global change biology, and three graduate students. She compares the premise of the research to people seeking information on ancestry and genealogy. When people want to trace back their ancestry, they take a cheek swab where they have some cells with DNA sending into the company and they then analyze thousands of genetic markers and then compare it to the database to find out where are the ancestors from. Did they come from Germany, Italy, other parts of the world? And we can actually do the same with the deer by taking a little uh, clip of its ear we can then extract enough DNA to get data for thousands. We had actually 40,000 genetic markers and then compare these deer to each other and trace their ancestry. The study revealed eight subpopulations of Arkansas whitetails. Another interesting finding was the presence of genetic markers showing connections between deer in southern Arkansas and deer from Wisconsin, which was a source for stocking deer in the 1940s. Some deer from northeastern Arkansas show markers that match deer from Howard County Game Refuge, which opened in southwestern Arkansas in 1930. You're able to kind of zoom in and go back in time, in a sense. We're able to go back and trace some of these sources of where these whitetails come from. Now that we know where these populations occur and, and how uh, they're delineated across the state, then we can look at ways we expect disease to move. And so we'll be able to predict the direction that the disease is likely to go. We'll be able to understand better when it has entered a new population and uh, how that may be different from the population that we've detected it in before. The study also offers a view of the distribution and frequency of particular genes that can determine an animal's susceptibility to CWD. We're able to zoom in on different locations of the genomic layer of our whitetails and that gives us an idea of the susceptibility and the resistance of chronic wasting disease. Another finding shows that geographical features can serve as soft boundaries between subpopulations of Arkansas whitetails. Our genetic data tell us uh, likely areas where deer will move and areas where deer will unlikely move. This is associated with landscape features and very obvious ones are the Arkansas River, other rivers, uh, interstates, highways, urban areas. Not all deer associate with one another. There are some barriers, geographic barriers, that keeps our deer herd in certain locations. For example, the Arkansas River seems to be somewhat of a pretty strong barrier. 
it's not a solid barrier. They can get across it, but it does have some potential there to block genetics. The genetics research required great effort, from game and fish biologists collecting samples to the intense analysis of genetic materials and comparisons among individual deer. This is a very, very large data set, and you could not do this on your personal computer, desktop computer, laptop. It would take about 99 years just to conduct one of the type of analyses we did, and we did many more, so you require very large uh, computers, supercomputers, and luckily we have these available at the University of Arkansas in the High Performance Computing Center. There's been several studies across the southeast and other places that have looked at white-tailed deer and looked at their genetics, but what's special about the study that we've done with the University of Arkansas is that we were able to look at much longer pieces of DNA. In the past, um, we used maybe 20 markers instead of 40,000 markers. It's just the tools we had available back then, but the field has advanced, and that then provides us a lot of resolutions to do modeling, to do calculations, and so on, and it's very, very powerful uh, to address the management question. Arkansas is really uh, in the lead with regard to that and the uh, chronic wasting disease and white-tailed deer. The project serves as a shining example of the power of partnerships between Game and Fish and Arkansas universities. One of the things about this project that, that it was just very impressive to me is the, the amount of knowledge that we have in our Arkansas University systems. There was a management question uh, by the state and as a land grant university we have uh, the mandate actually to support the state and uh, conduct research that can be used and translated into management. So this applied research uh, is a prime example of this partnership between the state and the university.